So we've got Will here today. All right, Will. How's it going, guys? Cool, mate, cool. So Will is gonna, well, he already has, made an excellent start on this gutter. We're using rubber internally. That's right, isn't it, Will? That's right, I mean, it's 1.5 mil, just to give it that little bit more thickness, because you can either get it in two sizes, you can either get 1.2 rubber, or pay a little bit more and you get a 1.5. So, because it's extra thick, it's more durability, isn't it, yeah? That's right, mate, that's right. Just gives it that little bit more, uh, so you pay a little bit more, and it's worth it, I think. But at the minute, just let you know where I'm at. Like John's just said to you, I've got the first bit of rubber in here, and now I'm onto the second bit of rubber in here. But the thing we've got to do is, because it was one long length, I decided to cut the rubber into three lengths. This way, it makes it a lot easier to manoeuvre into position. Instead of it being one massive long full length, making it really awkward for myself. Got the grinder going off. So wait two seconds. <laughs> well timed, Alex. <laughs> Cheers, mate. <laughs> <laughs> so now that I've got this first bit in and I've got this second piece in, now we have to join these two pieces of rubber together. Now the way we do that, you see in here. I've already put my three inch tape on this side of the rubber. I've then painted this bit of rubber with my sticky primer, which is this one here. And what I'm gonna do now is, if you quickly just get in there, I'm gonna take this bit of plastic off here, like so. Look at this, action shots. Look at this, very therapeutic, if you're into that. This is a satisfying video. Look at this, look. All the way up, bosh. Now comes the critical part. So we don't want to stick the sides first. We want to make sure that we stick the flat first because we want to get a tight fit into these corners here. So what I'm going to do now is going to flip that front over, like so. Just about get that, hopefully, from the middle into there like that. And then, if John can come back up. Yep. We, have, we have two tools that we use for the rubber. So this one, as you can see, it's got a wider piece. So we use that for the flat and it rolls around like that. So you can roll it on the flat. That's just to apply good pressure in then, yeah? That's to apply good pressure and to push out any air bubbles that's underneath the rubber. For this piece here, I'm gonna use this one. It's nice and thin, which is gonna allow me to get into the corners nice and tight. We're gonna work our way out. Nice up, nice and tight. Get it over it a few more times. Then we go to the other side. Same thing from here and we're going to push it out nice and tight. Get a good stick on there. Then we get the flat one in the middle and push out any bubbles that we got there. Now I am going to say this, this is extremely awkward. <laughs> we, we haven't given you an easy one here, have we, mate? No, we yeah, you ain't, mate. No, you ain't. So in the future, I will be doing a better video on a bigger rubber roof, getting better angles and showing you how we use the tools a little bit better. Show the process a lot easier on something wider than this. That's exactly, yeah, yeah. That's exactly what I'm saying. This is a bit awkward, but you kind of get what I'm going on about. Sorry, mate. We have, we have made your life difficult here, haven't we? You have indeed, sir. <laughs> you have indeed, Geese. Wouldn't expect anything less, mate. Right <laughs> just, just testing you, mate. That's what it is. Keeping me skills going here. Yeah. <laughs> so now, let's push this in. Nice and tight. There we go. And then we do it on the other side. Same process. Right there, get the air bubbles out, nice and tight. This bad boy, get some air, push it out, push it out, push it out. Work it. So that's nicely stuck down now, that's not going to move. Uh, what thing. guarantee have you got on rubber? Is it like 30 years, think, is it? Oh God, I think it's, uh, I think the, the, the actual material rubber is actually 50 years last long. Wow. You get a manufacturer's guarantee of 50 years. That's yeah. rubber for roofs. It's been proven to do that. Perfect for an application like this as well, isn't it? Because it's, it's, there's going to be a lot of water sort of in there. So you want to make sure that it's going to last. And so not only that, it's like I say, for this, how small this was, you can imagine looking at this, how difficult it would be to do in lead for it, let's say having to put your expansion joints in there. Oh, that'd be a nightmare, wouldn't it? It would be an absolute nightmare. Trying to do an up weld it up inside here would be so difficult. Even doing it down there, then trying to get it back onto here. And using rubber for this particular thing that we're doing, it's definitely the best idea. Definitely right, cool. So you're gonna put some lead in here though, aren't you? Just under oh, yeah. these copings. Yeah, so if you look just under the copings, with the Let's angle here. Get in there. So we're gonna get John and Phil, they grind it out underneath these copings for me. <laughs> More fun work for me to do. <laughs> <laughs> uh, we've got a sun, we've got to get some lead into here. 
dress it all the way down, coming down, and we'll have it just above, not quite on the flat, but we'll have it just above and giving ourselves plenty of cover. And that's going to be tomorrow's fun job. Awesome. Which I can't wait for on a Friday. And then our roof there, and our polycarbonate roof is going to come across here, sit over here, and there'll be a small drip detail on the end just to carry any water off the roof straight in. Cheers, mate. No worries. Back to the time lapse. Boom. Boom. Okay, so now I've got the rubber going all the way in the valley, which is very difficult, I've got to say. Not the easiest, but we got there in the end. So the next thing we've got to do is get our lead cover flashing underneath these coping stones here. And which you can see, it's not ideal. So the way I'm doing this is I'm getting all the lead bent and into position, ready to just slot straight in, which is going to make our life a lot easier. So I'm going to film myself now, showing you how I bend the lead and go from there. Let's crack on. So the first thing we do is we cut our lead at 1.2, and remember, no more than 1.5. So this first piece of lead that I've cut is at 1.2. Now we're using code four for this because it's only a cover flashing, and that's all that you're going to need. So the first thing we're doing, you'd want to put a one inch going into the brickwork. But then, what I have is this lead bending stick. So it's just a bit of timber that was left on site once and it's a solid bit of timber, so it doesn't matter if it gets wet or anything. And I cut all the sides on it. Mark on the 15. Mark on the 15. Get my lead bending stick. There we go. Strike the line. And now we want to bend this up. From the middle, bend it up. So, if you look, you can see that we've got sharp angles here, going up this way here. Then we've got an upstand going up, and then we've got to go into the course. So the first thing I'm trying to do is get a little bit of lip to go into the course. That's the first bit we've got to do. So I'm just going to get patting away from the middle outwards to get this a nice straight line. Okay, so if you look down there, that's nice and straight. So that's the first bit done. Okay, flip that over. Okay, so the next bit we got is the upstand. Now there's not a lot of upstand up there. So I believe it was 25 mil. So we put a mark, 25 mil. Let's go to the other end. And we mark another 25 mil. Get the lead bending stick with the straight edge. And mark there. So this is the difficult bit. Because it's only an inch or 25 mil, we've got to now bend this bit of lead up. So this is the hard bit. Right, let's work on this. If you look now, we're starting to get the angle that we want. It's not quite perfect just yet, but we're nearly there. We've got our upstand and we've got our lip going into the coursework. Now we want to follow the angle, the 45 degree angle. So what I did was I've cut a bit out of insulation, giving me the angle that I need. So we'll stick that there like so. There you go, if you look, we've now got our 45 degree angle on the lead as well. Now the next bit we've got to do is get it dropping down. So if you look at the angle of all that now, we've got a bit going into the coursework, we've got our upstand, we've got a cover coming down on the angle fillet, and then we've got a drop into the valley. Now the next thing I'm going to do 
I normally do this after, but I'm going to do this now because it's a bit awkward. We're going to put on some patination oil. Again, we put this on all lead that we do. Most times I tend to do it once it's all in, but this time I'm going to do it all before I put it in. And what this patination oil does, it not only does it clean it, give it a lovely shine, also protects it from oxidisation. There we go. And if you look, that is super sexy. Right then, let's get it up there. I'm going to show you now why I've moulded this lead and ready to go straight away. So what we're going to do, we're going to get underneath here. It's a little bit awkward, as you can see. And there's that famous word of ours, as you can see. We love saying that, as some of our viewers have pointed out. <laughs> there we go. So what I'd normally use, they're called little lead clips. I always say when you're putting them in, you put the H at the top, so H for HUP. Normally use a bolster to get them in like so, and you tap them in. But because of the angle that we've got, I can't quite get that bolster in there to get this clip in. If I did use the bolster and try and force it, the copings would pop or they would break off. It's just not good practice, basically. So I am going to use a mini little crowbar. So we're going to use this now. So I'm not getting it in the end first. I want to get one in here first. So push the lead in tight, like so. Put the crowbar where I want it to go, like that. Trust the S-wing. It's going to knock her in like that. So that's one side in. Now this side shouldn't pull out when I'm pushing this side in. Going to get another clip, my little crowbar. Going to get underneath here, push it in tight. So we've got one clip there, got another clip here. Because of where it is, let's put a few more in, shall we? Just to be safe. Another clip here. And just like that, that's how you get the lead in. So here we are, nearly finished. We've got our lead work all the way along the top here, around that corner. And if you look at that far end, we've got our lead coming all the way down here. And now we've reached this point here. So the bit I'm going to do today is this corner here. And if you look, it's not going to be the easiest. What we've got to do, we've got to get some lead coming down here up here, along here, up here, and up into there, and in there. So you can see, we've got multiple obstacles. We've got this corner, this corner, and this corner, which is going to make it very difficult. Now, I don't want to do this in too many different pieces, so I've decided I'm going to do this in one piece. And if you look, what I've got to do is, this piece has got to go on first, and then we're going to put a piece on here on top of that. And that should get it watertight. So the first thing that I've got to do get my tape measure and measure how big I want this piece of lead. Okay, so first we want to measure how long piece of lead we got. So we know we're working with 15 inch. We go an inch up there. This is going to come to about here. Okay, so we want to measure from here. So there's an inch up the wall there. We're going to come down here. And we're going to want to do this, cut this piece at uh, 500. So I'm just going to concentrate on getting this area in first. So the first thing I'm going to do is get the lead and we're going to get it measured up here. So if we look, the upstand on there is two and a half by two and a quarter, which is a good four. So let's get this lead piece made up first and go from there. Okay, first thing I want to do is get a line on here. So there's our two inches and then this bit here. So we've got to have our inch and two and a quarter. And then we've got to do inch, two and a half. Get my bit of timber. Line on it like that. And we've got to dress this up. Now we want to bend this side up. I'm going to go like that on the line, get it nice and flat. So bend this bit down here will make it a lot easier. And we want to bend this bit up here, like so. Here we go. Right. So, what I like to do is, let's get the angle of the roof first, which is about, I'm going to guess about there. And what we want to do is, we want to get this again, a bit of timber, put that where it's got to go, and then dress this in again. So we're nearly there, just got this little, let's call it a pig's ear. We've just got to get this pig's ear looking good. Right here like that.
You want to look down the angle of here first, see that that's fine. So you can see the little pig's ear is gone. So that's nice and straight down there. And if we turn it sideways, so we've got a nice angle here. But if you look now, that pig's ear is on this side. So what I want to do is, I want to get this piece here and bend it round onto here. Right there, so. tight as we can, because so we get that tight into that corner. And there we go. So if you look, that's the first piece. Fingers crossed, that'll fit in there nice and perfect. And then we can cut this, and get this around the corner, and go from there. So let's get up there, and see if she fits. Alright, so we get that dressed in there like so. Got her up stand here now. It's coming around here into our corner and then it's coming down here. What I'll do next is I've got to get this piece of lead, somehow get this around here, down and up here. So the way I'm going to do that is by cutting it and doing a weld. Once I've got the weld on the lead, I'll then get another piece, cover that in and she's watertight. But firstly, got to get this bit done. Wish me luck, people. So that's our bit going up the wall there. Got her up stand there. I've now cut it down here. What I've got to do is I've now weld a piece of lead in here, up here, and then coming up here. That's what we've got to do next. So we've now got our lead that comes across and comes around, and we've got our cover. So this point here now is watertight, and if you come around the side, we've then got it coming up to here, all going in here, up into the corner, and it's coming around to here. And then we've now got our upstand up here, and all we've got to do, put our lead, just to cover flush in, to go into here now. Before we put that next piece of lead in there, we've got to get ourselves some patination on. I've already done the rest of the lead the other day. We haven't done this piece yet. So before I put that piece on, I'm gonna quickly patinate this. So I've already done it underneath. So, now that we've got all the lead in, all the way down, the next job and the last job is we've got to point it all up. So what we've got to do is, we've got to get some muck into this joint all the way along down there. And once we've done that, it's going to be finished. That's the video for today. Hope you've enjoyed it. If you have, hit the like and subscribe button. I'm Will the Roofer, and you're watching Build a Vainee.